Hi, uh, Stephen Nellis, also of the Pacific Coast Business Times. Um, I'm wondering what specifically the SEC plans to do to prevent companies from burying important disclosures deep within footnotes and flooding investors with complicated information. In other words, uh, what specifically is the SEC plan to do to make important disclosures more accessible and comprehensible in plain English to investors? We, uh, we have a couple things going on, and as I said, up through June, I've pretty much stacked the Commission's calendar, the, the governance disclosure pieces of the calendar up through, through the month of June include proxy access, they include disclosure um, that's more complete and more helpful about a potential board member's qualifications to serve on the board and or on a particular committee of the board. You know, we have great disclosure now, <coughs> excuse me, as a result of Sarbanes-Oxley, about qualifications to serve on an audit committee. Are you a, a financial, audit committee financial expert, or are you financially literate, and there are standards around those. But we don't know that for board members who are serving on a risk committee or on the compensation committee. So we're going to improve that disclosure. We're going to move forward with proxy access, and we're going to hopefully move forward with some better disclosure that links executive and other compensation decisions to risk taking within the enterprise. Once we get through that, uh, this summer, as we start to jump into some other issues, we're going to take a complete look at the disclosure regime and make sure that um, there's adequate risk disclosure, um, whether the um, um, in information is getting to investors um, in the best possible way. And my guess is we'll find lots of things to work on there. Our disclosure regime must be really a living process, and it's got to be always, in my view, improved, take into account technology, take into account the changing economic conditions around us, which is not to say that we blow with the wind, um, but that we are always thinking about how to make it better and how to make it more accessible and usable to investors. So that is on, on tap, actually, for the second half of the year. Thank you. Hi, Jonathan Weil, I'm a columnist for Bloomberg News. To my knowledge, the last time the SEC brought a major accounting fraud case was in 2007, when in very close proximity it brought some large settlements with Conagra Foods, with Cardinal Health. And since then, we haven't, we've seen a number of major financial institutions blow up, and I don't think we've seen any senior officer or director at any of those financial institutions face any SEC um, enforcement actions. Why is that? Boy, I, I don't know that I can give you an answer in my um, three months of experience. Um, but, but let me tell you, as a philosophical matter, I think it's critically important we do that. To go back to what I said earlier, um, enforcement's got to be real in order for people to understand that adherence to the rules is not nice but required. And whether it's accounting fraud um, or other kinds of disclosure issues, um, we, we've got to be willing to back it up with enforcement cases. I will tell you generically that, in, again, in my three months, um, certainly we have authorized investigations into a number of, of companies for accounting fraud. Um, wh where those will lead us, I, I can't tell you at this point. Um, I'm only seeing you know, the front end of the process at this point, um, having not been there long enough to have authorized an investigation and seen it concluded and, and uh, and brought to um, brought to a, a final uh, conclusion. So um, I don't I can't speak to the past on this one, um, but I can speak to the future in the sense that um, I view it as terribly important for us to have a presence in prosecuting accounting fraud. It's again the lifeblood of, of our our disclosure system. In light of how we haven't seen a major accounting fraud case brought by the SEC for about two years, and aside for, aside from the assurances you just gave us, how do we know that that commitment is real? How do we know? I'm sorry. That that commitment is real. Well, you know, I, because and just I, I think there's a broad perception in the market that it's not. I I, I don't know what to tell you about that. Um, in, you know, when I had my confirmation hearing, I um, this is a little bit of an aside. I met with all the senators ahead of time to introduce myself and talk about some of the issues. And one was in particular quite interested in, in enforcement, and I told him my view of enforcement, which is very consistent with what I said to all of you, and and. I, he said, well, how do, how do I know you're not just saying those words? And my answer was, I, I think you'll need to see me prove that to you through the cases we bring, through the kinds of people we bring on board, through changes to the program, like eliminating the corporate penalty pilot, like eliminating the requirement that the commission sit in a meeting um, three months after the staff needs a formal order of investigation and authorizes it three months late. And those are all changes I've made, and made um, by fiat, um, 
within my first week on the job. I think you've seen um, a dramatic increase in the number of investigations authorized and initiated. I, I, I have to prove it to you with the cases. I completely understand that. Um, I, I don't know how else to do that other than to tell you that it's a high priority and we're going to continue to work on those. Thank you. Gail. Hi, I'm Gail Marks Jarvis, personal finance columnist at the Chicago Tribune. There's been a flood of ETFs onto the, into the market in the last few years, um, some of them extremely complex. And as I understand it, the SEC has really not had the expertise and staff to deal with the complexity of the types of products in. I'm thinking of some of the products that uh, short the market or parts of the market and are highly leveraged. I also think of some of the commodity funds, which uh, are very complex as well. And I'm wondering, uh, do you have the expertise to police these? And um, what is happening in terms of, of regulating these? The um, leveraged ETFs, I, I think, have been a concern. Um, we've, I've asked the staff to undertake a review of the disclosure, um, which you know, is helpful. It probably isn't the entire answer. Um, commodity funds is, is an issue on the agenda um, when the new CFTC chairman, if he's confirmed, um, we, we plan to talk about um, and, and plan to do some joint investor um, uh, focused inquiries um, about on, on both the, on the SEC side as well as the uh, CFTC side. Your broader question about do we have the expertise, um, we have tremendous expertise within the agency, there's no question about it. But a problem for all regulators, um, and it's true um, at the SEC as well, is keeping up with the enormous complexity and the innovation in the markets. And we have two choices. One is we can try to stop the innovation. And frankly, I think there's been some innovation over the last several years that it's been innovation about new fee structures and not much else and hasn't benefited investors. But I think there's also been some very good innovation. Um, so our choices are to clamp down on innovation or to get the expertise and the ability to understand how these products work, what their impact is on investors over extended economic cycles. So it's not just that they're great in a rising market and a low interest rate environment. That's part of, I think, our challenge is to bring that kind of talent into the agency uh, and have it um, um, seeded throughout the organization. So we're thinking about those issues when we're looking at new products. Thank you. I'm afraid we have time for just one more question. Um, Mary, that's actually to fly back to New York uh, this afternoon. 